Good evening, I'm Simon Boxall in for Donna Bush with Cayman Islands Government TV News Brief and Weather Forecast. The Department of Environment met with local water sports operators today to discuss the rapid spread of stony coral disease tissue loss on Grand Cayman's coral reefs. The coral disease first emerged on Floridian coral reefs in 2014 and since 2017 has spread to nearby Jamaica and throughout the Caribbean. The DOE immediately began monitoring and mitigation efforts when it was first identified near Rum Point in June 2020. Despite the DOE's best efforts, the disease has progressed rapidly over an eight-mile area on Grand Cayman. It has not yet been found in Cayman Brac or Little Cayman. A few local factors are believed to influence the spread of the disease. These include prevailing westerly water currents carrying the waterborne disease, Animals that use coral as a natural food source may possibly transfer the disease to healthy corals after feeding on infected corals. Corals in the reef can also be in direct contact with each other. Another possibility is a transfer of disease by humans between dive sites and reef fishing spots. We'll bring you more from the DOE meeting next week. Up next, our discussion with the Office of Education Standards continues. A new round of school inspections is set to start soon and Director Peter Carpenter recently shared his insights on how schools and students can expect to benefit from the process. Hmm. Well, um, a challenge of, uh, of the, the pandemic period was, was the fact that we had to postpone inspections, face-to-face mm -hmm. -face inspections. So there were 10 um, arrears and school inspections that um, were not completed. So our first priority now that the schools are open and now that the early years centres are open is to try and complete those 10 inspections and that, that will finish the first cycle. The first cycle was 53 schools um, and the, the, the government's plan is that we see every school in an inspection context and we report to the public about that. That will be completed, we hope, all being well by December. And the, the advantage of a face-to-face of -face inspection rather than a Zoom inspection is that inspection is all about improving the school. It's about helping the school to be even better than it is by observing a lesson and talking to the teacher after about, about what they do very well and what maybe a little bit of suggestions about what could be even better. Talking to the head teacher about things we've seen that they need to fix and the things that they're doing very well that needs mm -hmm. to be recognised. That is much more effective in a face-to-face -face context. The report is important, of course it is for, for parents and it's important for the government to make policy decisions. But the most effective element, I think, is that professional discourse that we are able to have with professionals about their work. And also bringing an external, um, experienced and critical eye to the school, asking the questions that sometimes other people don't ask, and directing the school very specifically about something that they need to do um, so that the school improves. So the purpose of it and the advantage of face-to-face -face is you have that professional opportunity to lead improvement and support the schools uh, on their pathway to, to improvement. We'll bring you more from that interview on upcoming news briefs. Today's broadcast ends with a roundup of remaining Breast Cancer Month awareness activities from Chair Maxine Bravo. Every October, for 23 years, Alliance Club of Tropical Gardens has organized a month of activities intended to show support for cancer patients, remember those who have passed, and build awareness in the general population. The onset of the COVID-19 pandemic has meant that efforts are organized a little differently this year. This year, we did not do a run walk. We decided to do a step challenge. And that step challenge is for one whole month. So we started out on the 1st of October. Persons were encouraged to register through Cayman Active. And once they were registered, then they would get a fitness tracker. Or if they so choose to use their fitness or Fitbits, mm -hmm. they could register. Ms. Bravo says a number of other events are also ongoing. We also have our pink shop open. Mm -hmm. And our pink shop, we sell items that goes towards purchasing mammogram vouchers. So the, the money from that goes towards purchasing mammogram vouchers for the community. We not only have the pink shop open, we will also have a distribution of mammogram vouchers at our Lions Den. And the Lions Den is located at 522 Shedden Road, right across from Napo, 
right next door to Mango Tree Restaurant. Come on in. We are open 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., Monday to Thursdays, 4.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m., Mondays to Thursdays, and on Saturdays, 11 to 3. For more information, visit the Lions Club of Tropical Gardens Facebook page. Turning now to the forecast from the Cayman Islands National Weather Service, isolated showers with light winds and seas are expected to continue across the Cayman area for the next 24 hours due to a weak pressure gradient across the Northwest Caribbean. Radar images show isolated showers over the Cayman area which are moving toward the west. Tonight there will be partly cloudy skies with a 30% chance of showers. Temperatures will fall to the mid-70s. Winds will be north to northeast, 5 to 10 knots. Seas will be slight with wave heights of 1 to 3 feet. For more on local weather, you can go online to weather.gov.ky or download the Cayman Islands National Weather Service app for the latest forecast. And that ends today's uh, news brief here on the Cayman Islands Government uh, Television. I'm Simon Boxall. Have a great weekend.